A storage area network, or simply SAN, is a form of centralized data storage that is often used by really big enterprises that have extremely large amount of data to deal with. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how it works. Most of you will probably be familiar with something that is very similar to SAN, which is called NAS, right? So NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. So a NAS is a small, actually it doesn't have to be small, it's a file server. It's a server with a large amount of storage in it that is connected to a network, and then it provides this storage to other computers on the network. Right, so the idea of a NAS is that you have a box, a computer or a server, that sits on the network and provides storage for other computers on the network. And these other computers are then able to access the files on this NAS. Right, so that's a very simple form of centralized data storage. All the data is stored on this one server on the network. A SAN is different from a NAS because a NAS, network attached storage, is just one single box. It's one unit, one device that is connected to the network that stores the data. Whereas a SAN isn't one device that stores the data, it is a bunch of devices, a network of devices storing the data. So typically, what it the classic SAN setup looks like is you have your regular local area network, right, your LAN, and then instead of connecting a NAS to it, so a normal file server, you connect your SAN to it. So the SAN is a dedicated network with the goal of storing data. That's all it does. The SAN just does one thing, and that is, well, storing data. That's the only thing it does, and it's a dedicated network that only stores data. So we now know what the SAN does, right? The SAN is a network that stores data, a network that consists of multiple devices. Now let's take a look at what's actually going on inside this network, shall we? Inside a SAN there are three types of devices that you'll find. The first type of device that you'll find inside a storage area network is called the host layer. Now these are the servers that interact with the outside world. So these servers are connected to the SAN but they're also connected to the LAN, they're also connected to the outside world, and these allow for computers from outside to actually connect to the SAN. So these servers form essentially the gateway. So when a computer from the outside wants to access a file from the SAN, it will connect to one of these servers to ask for the file. That's the idea of these servers. And, and I'm saying servers, it doesn't have to be multiple servers, but in most SANs there are multiple servers that have this job. The next type of device that you'll find in a SAN is called the fabric layer. And this is all of the networking equipment and cabling that is used to connect all of these devices to each other. So just like in a regular network, you've got switches and all of that to connect the devices to each other. But what's different in a SAN is that most SANs don't use regular Ethernet cables to connect the devices to each other. Instead, they use very high-speed fiber optic cabling. And so they also use specialized switches and specialized networking equipment that is compatible with this special cabling. The third type of device that you find inside the SAN is the data storage layer. So these are the actual data storage devices that hold the data within the network. Typically these are disk arrays. So they're basically boxes full of hard drives or boxes full of SSDs. Um, and they store the data. And there are multiple ones of them. Um, so when one of them goes down, the other ones can often keep running and keep the SAN online because there is redundancy built into the system. Now you might be thinking, well, that's kind of like a NAS, right? A, a data storage array in a SAN is very similar to a, a NAS on a LAN, right? Because it's a, it's a data storage device connected to a network. Isn't that the same thing as a NAS? Well, no, it's not the same thing as a NAS because these disk arrays are seen by the servers as local drives. So we have these host servers in our, in our SAN, and we have these disk arrays. And even though these disk arrays could be physically in a different building than the host servers, virtually 
they're seen by the servers as local storage devices. And that's because of the protocols that are used for the communication between these disk drives and the servers. So in a SAN, you use a specialized SAN protocol, such as iSCSI is an, an example of this, or ATA over Ethernet, or Fiber Channel. These are all the protocols that can be used in SANs um, for the communication between the disk arrays and the host servers. And these protocols work in such a way that the host server sees the disk arrays as local drives, even though they're physically not local drives at all. So now we know what's going on inside the storage area network when it's operating. We know what the components are and what they do. The, the thing that you have to understand here is that although we can see what these components do, the computers in the network can't. So what this means is that if we have our SAN, which is connected to our LAN, like this, if a computer on the LAN wants to access data on the SAN, it doesn't see all these separate, you know, all this networking equipment and all of these uh, disk arrays and host servers. It doesn't see all these separate components. When a computer wants to connect to the SAN, it just sees a cloud, right? It just, see, it just sees a bunch of storage that it can access. So the computers on the network don't actually see the difference between a NAS or a SAN at all, right? To these computers, it just looks like a cloud that can hold data. That's all they care about. So there you go. Now you know what a SAN is, how it's built up, how it works. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.